Good evening, and welcome to the fifth annual Schemer Honors. I'm Chris Orkill. And I'm Shauna James. Thank you for joining us tonight for what promises to be a very exciting virtual event. And this year, we have all four of our previous honorees with us as well. So five artists for our fifth anniversary. Sounds like a great evening. But it's not surprising as the Schemer has always been an advocate for Arizona artists. Yes, Martha Schemer donated the Schemer Art Center to the City of Phoenix in 1984, and its mission has always been to support and showcase Arizona artists, similar to this year's honoree. Absolutely. And I believe you said she was also an advocate for Arizona artists. Yes, and tonight we'll get to know more about her, including her nearly 60-year career, and we'll see her works and her journey of success. I'm really looking forward to it, especially with the year that the Schemers had. Yes, this year has been a tough year for everyone. As many of you know, we closed on March 17th due to COVID-19, but our team continued to work and take care of our instructors and students. But we were able to open again June 1st for summer art camps, and we successfully hosted 100 children ages six through 13. We opened July 6th for adult classes, and then for the public, August 4th. And since then, we've continued our evening art lectures, our opening exhibition receptions, and our wine and watercolor classes. We have our exhibitions, and typically we have four major events per year. Unfortunately, we haven't had the opportunity to have those events here in 2020. It's exciting that we're able to get together virtually tonight. Let's get started. The Schemer Honors event was created in 2016 as a reflection of the Kennedy Honors Program. Each year, the Schemer Art Center selects one Arizona artist to honor who has had a successful career, has made an artistic and cultural impact, and has given back to the state. Since 2016, we've had the pleasure of honoring four artists who will join us tonight. This year, we are inducting our fifth honoree and are pleased to introduce you to Beth Ames Schwartz. We can't wait to share more with you about Beth Ames Schwartz, but first we'd like to take a minute and thank our sponsors who have made tonight's virtual event possible, including our title sponsor, Billy Joe and Judd Herberger, and our wine partner, Pillsbury Wine Company. Cheers to all of our event sponsors and table hosts who are enjoying Pillsbury wine at home tonight. And now, in honor of our fifth anniversary, we'd like to introduce you to two of our previous Schemer Honors honorees, Jim Wade and Meryl Mahaffey. It's a pleasure to be here today for this uh, anniversary, fifth anniversary of the Schemer's Honors. Uh, I was quite, it was really a lovely experience when I was the second uh, honoree, and the evening with friends and collectors was a wonderful evening for me. Since then, I've continued working in my studio. It's what I do every day. And I have had shows since that show at Schemer, at the uh, at, at galleries in Denver and in Palm Desert, and also uh, at Bentley Gallery here in Phoenix. Uh, I'm especially happy to be here today to honor Beth Ann Schwartz. Beth and I have been art comrades for over 40 years. Beth, I welcome you to the Schemer Art Center, and we're thrilled to have your work on the walls. It's been very important for me to kind of put things up and look at them in a group and see where I've been through my career. Uh, now I'm home working on new work and hopefully opening doorways to new ways of thinking about how to paint. Some of this is behind me. You can see a more traditional realist style evolving into an abstract style. The reason for this is that I needed to find a new challenge. I thank the Shimmer for honoring me at the time, and now I'm here to honor a new artist for the Shimmer, Beth M. Swartz. Our 2020 Schemer Honors honoree was selected by the Schemer Art Center for the values that exemplify this event. In her own words, this Arizona-based artist has bonded with our state. The message in my work is the same message over a 55-year period. 
what happened for me is coming here to Arizona, there's no separation between the earth and yourself. And putting everything together for me was going down the Colorado River. It was a huge breakthrough in my life and in my art. I was brought up in New York. The youngest of three children. I never felt uh, understood or part of the family, actually. It was an intellectual family, but uh, feelings weren't talked about. I felt safe doing the art. It became the pipeline to my sanity. Well, when I went down the Colorado River in a raft, I took my paints with me, and I took sketchbooks, and I painted the whole time. There were faces and bodies coming out of the earth. When I got home after that trip, I started bashing into my watercolors ripped it with a screwdriver and weeping and writing in fear of death. And I realized that I hadn't dealt with the dark side. So I decided I would develop my firework. And that was the beginning of the whole process of ordering, disordering, and reordering life, death, and rebirth. We're constantly rebirthing ourselves. We're constantly being asked to burn away what we don't need, transforming ourselves, transforming, creating beauty out of destruction. And the culmination of the firework was uh, Israel Revisited. I work in series and with projects. Some of the projects take five to seven years. One of the latest series, the 13th Moon series, was predicated on the fact that I was upset about the Iraq War. Sometimes it takes a year to develop the first painting, although Moving Point of Balance was a 10-year project. Each series has a philosophical, conceptual base, whether it's Buddhism, the Kabbalah, Jewish mysticism, Taoism, Indian healing rituals, spending most of my life working wisdom systems and philosophical, religious, spiritual systems. I see the thread over 55 years, the same thread that links every single series that I've done. In order for humanity to survive, 
We must be able to transcend the pain, the anger and rage, because underneath there are only two real forces. There's love. or there's fear. What other cultures and what other wisdom series have taught us, they all have taught us the same thing, that all life is sacred and we need to treat each other with love and compassion and why haven't we learned it yet? All my work really says the same thing, that we need to learn how to treat each other better and with some compassion, empathy and love. So working the different series and uh, learning about them, they all say the same thing, that all life is sacred. And this is what the work is about. And of course, going backwards, this is the le le latest series here, uh, just a few of the pieces. And uh, it is not an easy time in our world right now. But going all the way back almost 60 years and down my hall, I have a few of the early works. I have a piece that shows, uh, I worked, when I went down the Colorado River, I painted the whole time. And so there's a piece there that has me uh, looking at the rocks. And then I have an early watercolor, some early watercolors. And then I have an early smoke drawing because when I started working with fire, I realized that uh, I had to start from the beginning, so the smoke drawings are just like the flow of smoke on paper, the way I did the flow of water and color on paper. These are a few early watercolors, meditation piece, part of a series I did called the Earth Flow series, and then a piece going down the Colorado River in a raft where I brought all my paints and I worked constantly, and then working with fire an early smoke drawing because I worked from the flow of water and color on paper to the flow of smoke on paper and then an early firework and a more mature firework. She uses elements of earth, wind, and fire and through all of her series has incorporated a thread of wisdom systems that she uses to expose viewers to the beliefs of others. Her hope is that by showing the interconnectedness of these belief systems that each of us may experience a common passion that ignites us to care for and love one another. 20 years ago, she started The Breakfast Club and opened her home to create a monthly networking opportunity for Arizona artists to come together to network with colleagues and gain support and encouragement. She also used these gatherings as opportunities to educate both the artists and the community. And she did this while also building an amazing career for herself leading to her being featured in over 80 one-person exhibitions, four one-person traveling museum exhibitions, three books, eight catalogs, and numerous articles and videos. I am pleased to introduce you now to our 2020 Schemer Honors honoree, Beth Ames Schwartz. I started painting when I was about five years old and then went to the High School of Music and Art and. It's always been a pipeline to my creative unconscious, and it's so much a part of me that I can't even imagine life without working. And I'm really grateful that I've had this home and this studio for so many years. And when I moved out to Arizona, it was really very challenging for me because I missed the greenery, and so I went all through the parks and anywhere I could find green and painted my watercolors. And then they started to change and get bigger and more abstract. And finally, when I went down the Colorado River, everything changed. And I realized I fell in love. I, I bonded with the desert and Arizona. And in a way, that transformation moved me into doing, finding out, okay, what is the secret to life? What is the secret to life? And my, my friend told me, well, it's, you need order and you need disorder. And he was a, a systems philosopher and scientist, but you need more order than disorder. Well, I didn't like that. I didn't like that we just get born and then we live and we die. And I feel, 
we, I don't like entropy, so I decided I wanted to add a third idea, which would be reorder, life, death, rebirth, and to create beauty out of destruction. And so that sort of became the way my work evolved after doing a series on the elements. When I came to fire, I realized I couldn't make a picture of fire. I needed to work with it. And that's how my firework developed. Slowly, the color began disappearing from the work. And then eventually, as I explored, the color started coming back in. And I did rolled out the paper, which was birth, meditation and birth. I destroyed it with a screwdriver. I bashed it in. And the first time I did that, I started to cry. And I realized I hadn't dealt with the fear of death and the dark side. And so then I created beauty out of it with paint and uh, more, more layers of paper and burning. And it was very exciting for me to come up with a whole new way of working. And the firework culminated in a show called Israel Revisited. And, and then that going to sacred sites and doing pilgrimage became a very important part of my work honoring the earth and honoring uh, women especially. When I went to Malta, I saw that there were these holes in the earth and the, and the early uh, matricentric cultures would pour milk into these holes into the earth as a way of honoring the Mother Earth. And so as the work developed, I did several projects using pilgrimage. The 10-year project, The Moving Point of Balance, balanced the male and the female. And I think we need this balance in the world. And as the work developed, every series I call exploring a wisdom system. And each series looks different, and maybe it lasts five or 10 years, but it is a whole life in itself, the exploration. And then I moved to another series and another wisdom system. And this last project was done, it's just started really uh, during lockdown. And it's based on a line from Hart Crane's Broken Tower. And so it was, we entered the broken world to seek the visionary company of love. Actually, it's to trace, not to seek, which is very interesting that you use that word because we trace the way we move from, for me, from series to series and the evolution, because I believe that we need to evolve as a species and as uh, humans. These are a few of the over 30 pieces I did for a show at the New York Gallery uh, called The Word and Paint, the 13th moon based on 8th century Chinese poetry, where the poetry is translated and it's uh, embedded in the work. This is a see-through piece, the light goes through it, from 1977. It's interesting because the line from T.S. Eliot, Reminders of Invisible Light, that's the name of uh, several of my works and a show that I had in the 90s. And here the light goes through this. It's a memorial to the Holocaust. In this room are a few pieces, one is from Reminders of Invisible Light, a series based on T.S. Eliot's poetry. There were about 50 pieces, and it's the only one left that I have. And then th this series was about 30 paintings done after I had chronic fatigue syndrome. And I began painting slowly as I got better through a meditation group that I found, the idea of Shen Shi. So the series is called Shen Shi. And it's the idea that moment by moment, we have the opportunity to live in the moment. And so you can see the grid goes moment by moment. And then I began to add healing symbols. And this is a symbol from the Kabbalistic scheme of the four worlds. We live in the world of action, and then the world of foundation, the world of creation, and finally, the world of emanation. Welcome, Beth. Thank you so much for being here this year. We're so pleased to honor you. We're so excited to share the exhibition of your artwork with everyone. 
I'm so happy to be here. Thank you so much for inviting me. For our viewers at home, we'd like to have the opportunity for you to just talk through your exhibition and share with us some of your um, thoughts about when you were creating the work and what people th should think about when they come to view it. Yes, you know, for about uh, almost 60 years, I've been interpreting wisdom systems through my art. And I realized in 2016 that uh, 1.6 billion Islamic people live in the world, and I had never really talked at the Creatus. And coincidentally, I was giving a talk at the Creativity and Madness Conference in New Orleans, and after my talk, two doctors came up who were Muslim, and they I explained my dilemma, and they said they would introduce me to Hamza Youssef, who started Zatuna College in Berkeley. And so I flew to Berkeley and we met and we exchanged books. I gave him my books, he gave me his books, and then I felt inspired in reading some of the material and found a Sufi study group because I was particularly interested in Sufism, the mystical aspect of Islam. And when I went to the study groups, I realized that they were so ecumenical, so respectful of all religions and all philosophies, I felt very inspired to embark on this series. This series is called Purification of the Heart, and it comes from a book that I uh, was given when I went to Berkeley. And it's interesting because I've used smoke again, and I hadn't used smoke since 1976. I included an early piece in the exhibition to show the continuity of symbology and also concept, because the conceptual idea of smoke has been used from the beginning of time as purification, as cleansing. And the other symbol that I use in this exhibition is the winged heart, which actually was brought here when Sufism came to the United States. And the eye I included because the interesting idea of the eye has been used several times in other series, and the eye of enlightenment, the eye of awareness, and also the idea of wisdom as the slowly informed body of knowledge that wisdom comes slowly. It's also, you could call it a vitamin for the soul as we begin to expand our knowledge and expand our own awareness of life, and you can see how the eye becomes clearer as this, this little series evolves. And the last part of the series, the, the smoke is clearer and it's lighter, and the eye is more open. After I completed the purification of the heart pieces, I began to work with these 30 by 30 Tugra pieces because I was fascinated by the winged heart and the Tugra symbol. And you can see that I'm beginning to use the smoke as a continuation from the purification of the heart. And I'm putting paste and other materials to give a sense of energy and movement in the pieces. In these large paintings, I want the image to be revealed slowly, just like wisdom is a slowly revealed body of knowledge. So the winged heart is slowly revealed as we become more insightful and self-reflective. And we used a um, camera, a projector, and projected the image on the canvas, and then in the cases of the large ones, made it larger. After we have the symbol on, and then um, what I do is I pour the paint on the canvas. Usually it takes me a year to do the first piece in a series. And say a series is five to 10 years, this series was only five years. And the four paintings were um, a two year process. And the way this particular piece was done, there are probably 35 different pours. And you can only do one or two pours a day because you have to wait till they dry. And so the piece is wet, and then the paint is mixed, and then I have to strain it to make sure there are no bumps in it. And then after the 
the piece is, usually I work outside after the piece is wet and slowly I pour the paint and watch it drip. And then I have a hose outside and I hose it down. <laughs> it's like the old joke, watching the paint dry. And then actually I am watching the paint dry until it's ready for another pour. And so at least 35 to 40 pours in each of these four paintings, although I only have two in the exhibition. We are so pleased that she will now add the Schemer Art Center to her impressive list of accomplishments and that we have the opportunity to feature some of her new artwork in an exhibition that will be here at the Schemer Art Center through February 18th, 2021. As you can see, Beth's work is not only beautiful, it's also very thought-provoking, and it's truly reflective of what we want to honor for our Schemer Honors event. Again, here's a look and an update from two of our previous honorees, Angela Tassoni and Bill Nebaker. Hi Beth, congratulations on your nomination as the 2020 Schemer nominee. I'm very happy to be here this evening to celebrate the fifth anniversary of the Schemer Honors and to congratulate Beth Ames Schwartz. The Schemer Honors is a fabulous event and I'm grateful to be a part of it to help and to be among these wonderful artists. The evening I was honored was exciting and I will always cherish it. Since then, I've continued to do my artwork, the jewelry I design with sustainable materials. I've also started an online shop, tassonijewelry.com, with my own artwork and design. Additionally, I've created a new Tassoni trademark clasping featuring a leaf, which symbolizes my love for nature. I'm currently painting and creating sustainable jewelry, where I'm aiming to do a show in 2021. Congratulations, Beth. I'm very happy to see a female artist celebrated with us. Hello, I'm glad to be back here at the Shimmer Art Center. I was uh, uh, the inductee in 2019 for the Arizona Artist. Uh, it was a wonderful experience for me. I would like to, con to congratulate the, the 2020 artist coming up, Beth Ames Schwartz. Congratulations. A little update on some of the accomplishments I've done since then in my art. I have finished a 14-foot monument statue from the city of Prescott that's mounted on a roundabout between Prescott and Chino Valley. I'm very honored to have done that. And, uh, I also am extremely honored to be chosen to do a eight foot monument for fallen officers for Yavapai County. And I am commissioned to do a, uh, uh, a territorial lawman in the 1890s. Uh, I'm very proud to have done this. Once again, congratulations. Thank you. Beth, thank you so much for taking us on a tour of your artwork here at the exhibition. And we are so delighted to honor you and your work this year. As a token of our appreciation, we'd like to present this gift to you. And just thank you for the opportunity to meet you, to work with you, and to share your art with so many others in the community. Thank you. It was wonderful working with you. As we close, we want to make sure everyone knows where they can go to find more information about Beth Ames Swartz and all of the works that she has created over the years. And that is BethAmesSwartz.com, of course. We also want to make sure everyone knows about our efforts to expand and purchase the property next door, already surrounded on three sides by Schemer Art Center land. If we can acquire this property, it would give us the opportunity to nearly double our impact and have more adult classes, more summer camps for kids, the opportunity to work with more Arizona artists and hire more instructors. Our goal is to acquire the property by the end of this year, but we need your help. Donors who participate will be forever showcased on site for supporting the legacy of the Schemer Art Center and recognizing the impact art can have in our neighborhoods, communities, and state. We hope you will join us and consider donating to our expansion campaign. More information about this can be found on our website 
and donation cards and pledge forms are included in your watch party baskets for your consideration. Thank you for your consideration and for joining us tonight. Again, we're so pleased that you could join us as we share the achievements of Beth as our 2020 Schemer Honors honoree. We'd like to thank all of our event sponsors for making tonight's virtual event possible and all of our event committee members. Thank you. All names will follow. And on behalf of the board, volunteers, benefactors, and honorees, we thank you again and good night.